On this video, I'm going to tell you the places that we love to eat, get a drink, and go sightseeing in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm Bill. I'm Kelly. And this is our This adventure. is our adventures. This charming town is one of our favorite places to visit. From the beautiful homes to the cobblestone streets, this town just takes you back in time. Charleston, originally called Charlestown for King Charles II, was established by English colonists in 1670 on the west bank of the Ashley, thus beginning the colonization of South Carolina. Moved to its present site in 1680, it became the commercial center for trade in rice and indigo. In 1722, it was briefly incorporated as Charles City and Port, and in 1783, it was reincorporated as Charlestown. While we loved to camp, going to Charleston and staying downtown in a room is by far the way to go. With everything being just walking distance from downtown, you never have to get your car out. And if you need to go a little further, you can just Uber to wherever you need to go. If you're wanting to go to Charleston and camp, James Island Campground is by far the best place to go. Enjoy the nature beauty of James Island County Park, this year-round fun for the entire family. Just a short drive from downtown Charleston, this 643-acre park offers abundance of exceptional recreation offerings and natural beauty. There's so much to do here. You could literally just stay here and not go anywhere else with tons of walking trails and even a cool off-leash dog park that includes a lake. The Early Bird Diner has a pleasure of serving up some of the finest made from scratch diner flair in Charleston. But be ready to stand in line, it's a popular place. Dab's was a little hole in the wall breakfast place that we had found. Great food, worth the drive. Charleston's restaurant scene is gaining national attention for its distinctly southern flavors, unique modern restaurants, and talented newcomer chefs. One of our favorite places to eat is Tommy Condon's. Supposedly, it's the most authentic Irish pub in Charleston. It has a great, cool Irish pub atmosphere. One of my favorite things to eat there is the fish and chips. You get a huge piece of fish. Charleston's best waterfront restaurant has a view that is a distinctive destination unto itself. Housed in a 1940 retired naval building on the east side of the Charleston Peninsula, Fleet Landing Restaurant features classic and contemporary southern seafood flair in a setting that celebrates the area's waterfront heritage. The Blind Tiger, established in 1893, is a unique historical restaurant. It has a great courtyard dining area. You can just sit back and have drinks with friends, or you can sit down and have a meal. Another cool place to eat at is Our Kitchen. This place isn't a restaurant, it's a kitchen, with a unique five-course meal set daily from what is freshly available from the market that day. This place makes you feel like you're at your best friend's party and your friends are cooking for you. You need to make reservations for this place well in advance. We did four weeks and we barely got a spot. It is a very popular place for the locals as well as tourists. Another place that we love to go just sit on the rooftop and have a drink is Henry's on Market. Established in 1932, Henry's is the oldest continuous restaurant in Charleston and the state of South Carolina. 
A really cool local pub is the Griffin. Every available service in this wacky restaurant and pub is wallpapered with dollar bills from over 20 years that patrons have left behind in tribute. Now, if you're into ghosts and hauntings, the Haunted Jail is a cool tour to go on. This is a behind the scenes tour of the old city jail which housed some of Charleston's most infamous criminals, 19th century pirates and Civil War prisoners. Located on Magazine Street downtown, the old city jail operated from 1802 until 1939 and most of the building's original structures like the cells and warden quarters remain intact. Explore the cells, the hallways, and into the places where Charleston's worst criminals lived and died. One of our favorite tours of all is the Crafted Travel. It's the walking pub and history tour. It's a three hour walking tour through the historical old city. You learn the five P's, pubs, pints, prostitutes, pirates, and politics. When we booked this tour, I thought, there is no way that for three hours I'm gonna be able to listen to history. But they made it so much fun. We stopped at three pubs, and you get a drink and an appetizer at each pub. And this is included in the price. Now, if you're not up for drinking and learning the history, another great tour is the carriage tours. There is no better way to explore Charleston through the historical streets than by horse and carriage. Named after General Thomas Sumter, Revolutionary War hero, Fort Sumter was built after the War of 1812 as one of the series of fortification on the southern U.S. coast to protect the harbors. Construction began in 1829 and the structure was still unfinished in 1861 when the Civil War began. 70,000 tons of granite were transported from England to build up the sandbar in the entrance of the Charleston Harbor, which the site dominates. The fort was five side brick structure, 170 to 190 feet long, with walls five feet thick. Standing 50 foot over the low tide mark, it was designated to house 650 men, 135 guns, and three tiers of gun implements, although it was never filled to its capacity. Walk in the steps of the heroes at Patriots Point Naval and Marine Museum. Home of the USS Yorktown, see three vessels, 28 aircraft, and the Vietnam experience, and more. If you love history and you love your country, this for sure is a place to visit. Rainbow Row is one of the most iconic views associated with Charleston. If you're in the area, a must-see is the Angel Oak. The Angel Oak is a southern live oak located in Angel Oak Park on St. John's Island near Charleston, South Carolina. The tree is estimated to be over 1,500 years old. It stands 66 and a half feet tall, measures 28 feet in circumference, and produces shade that covers 17,200 square feet. Its longest branch is 187 feet in length. I would suggest if you're gonna go, go early. We went right when it opened and it wasn't crowded. Called the Holy City for its many church steeples and historical early religious tolerance. There's tons of churches and if the doors are open, you're welcome to come in. A lot of these recommendations are pre-COVID so I'm not sure what's still open and what's around, but these were our favorite places. I sure hope that you enjoyed our favorite places in Charleston, and I hope soon you will be able to go and visit because it's such a magical city. Till next time, like and subscribe.